back in August of 2021, I ended up getting my hands on two mixtapes from the dark web. One called Suffer Little Children, and the other called Amber Alert. When I covered these, I went in blind, only going off the information that they were legal, but being warned they're far more intense than most other compilations out there. Both were terrible, but one stood out and shook me to the core. That being Amber Alert. Just over 30 minutes of death, child trampling, extremely violent child abuse. Many of the clips could even rattle the most seasoned gorehound, and many called into question my moral compass when it was requested that I react to it full uncensored, which I declined. But like many people, I can't shake one piece of media that was used in that horrifying mixtape, and I chose to include it into the original video on YouTube as it demonstrated the severity and proved the existence of the compilation. The blood-chilling 911 call of a six-year-old girl in El Salvador it isn't something unheard of or extremely rare, as it has been talked of, but I haven't dug into it myself, admittingly because of its extreme unsettling nature. It really makes me feel uncomfy. The call details the graphic murder of a young girl's mother while she attempts to call 911 for help, and to make matters worse, help never did arrive, and it is unknown who the girl even is. El Salvador, according to some articles on the story in general, has a computer and phone systems that are lower in quality than fast food POS systems that run from Windows XP. In other words, your local pizza joint most likely has a more advanced computer and phone setup than this 911 dispatch did. And El Salvador, like many of its neighboring nations, suffers from an extremely high crime rate. The cartels, the local gangs are all present in El Salvador. The impoverished communities also live in fear of these individuals. Anyone who values their lives does not dare speak out when they witness many crimes out of fear of retaliation. But children should be different, right? Children are pure, they're innocent, and when they are in danger, even the coldest people tend to show humility. And that's what makes this story even more chilling as you dive in. It is estimated that around 10 people are murdered daily due to gang violence in El Salvador. Due to this, the non-corrupt police forces are mostly always overwhelmed, and highly underprepared for the volume of reports of violence in the country. This tends to cause many cases to simply be ignored or pushed aside for whatever is deemed more important at the time. But a set of disturbing events would begin to unfold in December of 2006 when a rather new employee to the El Salvador emergency system, Zoila Cisneros, responded to a call from a six-year-old girl. The entire call is rather short, and is easily one of the most disturbing pieces of audio I've ever heard, and I think many of you would agree. Easily surpassing the anxiety and nauseating feeling the Russian Brick video gives, and arguably much more. Zoila was working in her cubicle around 9am, and awaited for the first call of the day. Most emergency service telephone operators are trained in relatively the same manner as the US, and El Salvador is no different. So as one would expect, all phone calls should be recorded, and typically a lock and details of the call would be saved to be used by the first responders. The difference here, as I mentioned earlier, is the workload and equipment's capabilities are far less comparable. Zoila would answer the phone and hear a panicked child on the other end. The call begins with this young girl trying to explain where she is and that her mother is in danger. In fact, a man was fighting with her, and while she made the call. And after a few seconds, the child begins screaming in horror as her mother is killed in front of her. The screams of the child saying mommy, mommy, no mommy, don't die, are some of the most haunting cries I've ever heard in my life, and reading the transcript is 
it's it makes it even worse. To make matters worse, you can hear what appears to be another child crying out as well. Or so I believe, I could be mistaken on that. The call ended, and Zoila informed her cubicle neighbor about what had just happened, who dismissed her immediately saying that children lie constantly, and adding if she was concerned she should tell their supervisor, which she did. The corporal called the cell phone number back, but a man answered. The corporal informed the man of the child's phone call and what was said. The man said something about it being two brothers fighting and nothing more, and how the children are so scandalous, and ended the call. The matter was never investigated further, and it is unknown if the children survived the ordeal. Before we continue, I will play the call. I warn you now, this is extremely disturbing and contains actual audio from an alleged unsolved case and homicide. A system operator sifting through the audio recordings in search of things that could be used for educational purposes found the call audio. No names, no details, just the date was recorded. Still, the agent thought nothing of the child, the lack of details on the file, and it circulated all along every computer and various people, until almost two years later. A sergeant considered the call to be worthy of sharing with the public. Reasons were not given, but we can be optimistic it was in hopes of bringing some justice to this horrifying event. But the sergeant allegedly uploaded it to YouTube, at least to my knowledge, and that raises questions in itself. It then circulated among the public all over the world in shock circles, and for some time, the who and why immediately arose, and the scary truth is, nobody knows the girl in the call. Her home nor mother have been actually identified. However, there was an alleged interview with the grandmother of the child. Details of that interview seem sketchy, but the supposed mother goes over the murder, why it happened, and with really eerie detail as if she was actually there. She explained that the victim was 23 years old and named Clara, and had two children from different fathers, a 10 year old girl and an eight-year-old boy. Clara was described rather softly as an alcoholic. She drank a lot, and she talked a lot of shit. One day, she offended a woman that they discovered sitting at the entrance of a store. It is unclear what was said, but apparently it was a serious insult. She supposedly knew some secrets from that woman, and she screamed them at her and used various insults as well. 
The woman was also allegedly part of a gang. The alleged grandmother discussed the murder being at close range when the woman came back with two other men and shot her dead. However, this doesn't seem to make sense. No gunshots could be heard in the emergency call, and the mother seems to have been murdered at the time of the recording, not after. Shot up full of holes with blood and dirt like a sugar pie was said multiple times in these alleged accounts as well. That doesn't sound right, especially from someone who would be grieving the loss of their child and possibly grandchildren. The reason as to why no details were kept and why the matter was never investigated were piss poor if we are describing them kindly as well. 2006 was not a good year for the police or president of Saka's security policy, and in 2006, the homicide record was broken in El Salvador. Allegedly, nobody even knows who uploaded the audio recording to the police and diligently they supposedly investigated to figure out who did this but refused to share the details even though they supposedly found this out and handled it. Overall the entire event was blatantly covered up and swept away until it was no longer being discussed. The excuse of more important cases, workload, etc etc all eventually boiled down to calling it a lie in an urban legend, a hoax. But it really truly boiled down to negligence, and if it wasn't for a new employee, there is a good chance nobody would even know about this horrible murder or murders. Unfortunately, with the lack of details of the event, and with how much time has passed, this crime will probably remain unsolved forever. Even now, 16 years later, the call's authenticity is debated, often due to varying accounts and stories and lives from the El Salvadorian authorities. One official even claiming it to be all, quote, an urban legend, and no event was ever recorded in the logs, therefore it never happened. Meaning that Zoila didn't record it properly, the new employee didn't record it properly into their system. Mind you, the new employee who was trained by the office that snubbed the call of a distressed child office nonsense with no investigation purely because it was a child calling. Their system was not capable of automatically archiving the telephone from which the call originates, and it appears on the receptionist's screen just the time the call takes, as in any telephone. If this is not handwritten down on a notepad or something, the number will also just be deleted after the call ends. In the call, the girl who reports the death of her mother is about two digits away from pronouncing the whole number of her cell phone, or landline she's calling from. When Zoila interrupts her, varying accounts of this being real or fake are tossed around El Salvador. But if you're brave enough, listen for yourself. You decide if that's fake. So like I said, to me, this is one of the worst pieces of audio I've ever heard. And a lot of people want to contest that. Well, it's not a fucking competition, you know, like calm down. No one gives a shit. And it's, I'm just having fun here with that shit. It's subjective. Everybody has different ticks. Everybody's got different fears. Everybody's got different things that bother them. There's things more often than not that are considered universally abhorrent and fucking like terrible and that's harming children is typically at the very tippy top of that list with animals being right up there with it or right below it and it's like i mean i guess that's how it should be because like animals just like fucking children they're innocent they're pure they don't do things with malice intentionally they don't develop those kind of weird uh selfish ideologies until they're older and that's one reason why even like some of the most hardened criminals have like personal codes or like organizational codes through like certain crime like crime families if you will or like organized crime to never harm children uh even you can even see things on uh the deep web hitman sites i mean most people universally even when they're trying to be edgy and stupid and showboaty and like oh this is this is a hitman for hire they'll even say no kids most of the time depends who's the edgy motherfucker you're talking to i guess but to me, I'm on that boat, too. It's like children are something different. And 
given where this happened and how it went down and the crime rate, I shouldn't be too surprised that it went under the rug, if you will, and was basically just snubbed off. And part of me, though, argues that with the same thing I've been repeating, and it's just like, hey, children are different, right? Like, that should be something different. And the fact that this was never investigated makes it even more terrifying. Now, I already know, too, there's going to be quite a few people contesting the authenticity of it and calling me a fucking idiot and this, that, and the other. I don't give a fuck. Um, and if we want to give full fairness out here, I can't 110% confirm that it's real. I can't. Am I in fucking El Salvador? No, I'm not. But what I can say is that while children are obviously coachable, they're actors, you know, people can do whatever. It, I don't think that's not only the a very unethical kind of thing to make a child dramatize, while not unheard of. It's kind of unlikely given, like, the funding, the workload, everything for El Salvador. Like, this wasn't, I don't, I don't think that's really the hoax, you know, people were going for. And the fact that it had the attention of the El Salvadoran government kind of shows it wasn't just spawned out of the internet's asshole. And there'll be a lot more towards this and more investigative theory into it, just like a bunch of other things we went over before and others have too. So, I believe it's real. I mean, you be the judge. I don't want to be Mr. Aguilar, dear, but, like, really, like, if you have the balls for it, you got the stomach, go ahead and listen to it. It's fucking horrible. It's unnerving. And, yes, to me, this is far worse than that fucking Russian brick video. I can watch that while eating cereal and not even give a shit. Like, it don't matter anymore. While it's sad, you get to a point where it's, like, you really realize what dark shit is out there. And then, like, after some of the mixtapes and the crazy shit I've seen over this past year and beyond that... It, it kind of takes a lot to unnerve me, but one way it should, just like anyone else out there, is, like, children being hurt. You know, I'm a father myself. I don't like that idea, no matter whose kid it is, no matter whose pet it is. You know, I don't believe that that, that should be something that people fucking put around for sport and entertainment. And this is coming from the guy that's the gore god. Uh, really, it's like... To me, it's something that's just absolutely terrifying and chilling. Like this video, or this audio rather, and then just reading the backstory kind of blew my mind. A lot of people didn't really want me to make the video, or they figured there's better videos, quote unquote, to make. And while everyone's opinion does matter to a degree on that and what I do for the channel, I still am the kind of person that will go with my gut. And I go with, like, if, I, if I'm really interested in something and I start digging into it and pulling out more information, I look at it as almost like a fate thing. Call it as you will. It was meant to be. And a lot of the times, those kind of videos that I've made like that have panned out really well and actually just blew open the fucking like floodgates as far as information goes. And I think that's cool. Now with this, what I found immediately is that, yes, people did talk about it around the time it was circulating. Yes, it was talked about. But it was talked about in the same manner of like just a pure reaction to it. And no investigation was really done by anybody that I could see, at least in the English side of YouTube and just articles up the ass that really sucked ass. Like, and then, of course, you know, Reddit, which, believe it or not, Reddit was actually the better source of information on some of this to summarize the event and sift through some of the garbage. Now, I think I went over that where people would want to battle the authenticity, and that was on there as well, but not as much as you'd think. Um... I just don't think that is something that's fake. There's really no reason to do it. Not that that's, not that there's a reason to fake a lot of shit out there, but I, I just don't, I don't believe it. I don't believe the fucking El Salvadoran government who can't even fucking keep their shit together when someone's being murdered on the phone. Like, I, I, nah, I'm Gucci, dude. Like, uh, that was, that's a stain on that. Like, that's bad. That's fucking terrible. And... It's a real disturbing thing that we don't know who that girl was. We don't even know if that was actually a little girl. That could have been easily a little boy. Kids have squeaky voices. And we're just all making assumptions. And then that weird-ass story about the, the grandmother. Like, it, they're already out to lie. They're already out to fucking... You have to really just use your best judgment. Point blank. Keep it short and simple. But there's not a whole lot more I think I could discuss about this one. Um, overall, it to me, like I said, it, it takes the cake on disturbing audio it's not the most disturbing to me but uh, it's up there and it really does make me uncomfortable no matter how many times i've heard it and it's been at least 10 times now and not proud to say that but doing this uh going through amber alerts hot fucking mess you know 
going through all that, it really just uh, puts into perspective how fucked up the world is and how much fucked up shit's out there. And that's only what I know. But like I said, I won't keep you at the door with the, you know, your hand on the handle anymore. I'm Plague Moth. You don't know that or oh, no, 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 fuck. But like I said, that's about all I got for it. It's an unsolved mystery and it's fucking terrible. But thank you so much for watching. You may have already noticed that I've been making some changes. We got a new PC, so I don't know if you joined me for my last YouTube stream, but it was quite literally the last. I am going to be on twitch.tv slash plaguedmoth every Saturday to 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That time is subject to change, of course. Just pay attention to my schedule. I'm trying to abide by a non-posted schedule until I could get basically get confident and organized enough to post it. I want to make sure my ducks are in a row before I commit to things, basically. But so far, so good. If you like the video, please like and subscribe. Please check out the links down below, as well as in the description to get all my social media, access to the Patreon, which gets you over 12 hours of videos not on YouTube, as well as access to my Discord, downloadable content, discounts on the merch coming soon, too, which is really cool. Didn't know I could do that. That's going to be a permanent thing. As well as the Ultimate Not Safe for Life Iceberg, because I know a lot of people have been complaining about that as it's not going to be posted on youtube anymore you can thank youtube and you know me wanting to keep my channel intact for that one but we're still continuing up on patreon so don't worry about that i got a lot more in store for you on youtube but thank you so much for watching i really appreciate you all and if you're watching this on patreon early thank you so much for your patience and supporting me i love you all to death holy crap my ac scared the shit out of me i'm plague moth and i'm out of here Maybe. I actually got, like, the freaking cords, like, wrapped around me. I, don't, I need... I'm, like, literally in the middle of, like, organizing stuff pre-stream. I'm a last-minute boy, if you will. Procrastinator. Anyway. See ya.